Hi everyone, and welcome back to Balkan Sis, the show that's going to help you navigate the massive challenges of life, motherhood, culture, identity, and belonging with more ease, acceptance, joy, and purpose. Thanks to each and every one of you that come back every time to listen, learn, heal, and feel inspired. If you do love the podcast, then do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button. It really does help spread the word. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of Balkan Sis. It is such a pleasure to have you all here. I have a very special hello. little guest for you today, and it's my little son, Vito. Say hello, Vito. Say hello. <laughs> He's just looking at himself in the camera. A tia, Vito. Say hello. Hello. Say hi, everyone. So this is a very special episode that I recorded with my gorgeous husband, Andrew. We celebrated our 15-year anniversary since we started dating. In, God, when was that? Can't even remember. March? Hang on. And we recorded our, uh, God, we celebrated our nine-year wedding anniversary in June. So we just recently yeah. went away last mm -hmm. weekend, mm -hmm. didn't we, Vito? You yeah. stayed at Teta's house, yeah. at Auntie's house. So we went away last weekend yeah. um, and it was a beautiful retreat here yeah. on the Gold Coast. It was yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Yes, sir. And on the way back to picking up little Vito, yeah. Uh, we wanted to record 15 things we learned in 15 years of being together. Ito, say 15. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's relax now, okay? <laughs> it's very, very excited. Okay, guys? So anyway, uh, don't want to make it too long because we have places to be. It's a Sunday today and it's family day. And we're going to go visit Dido, our granddad. And yeah. I made a delicious. Jenny. I made a delicious zelyanitsa. So it's yeah. like a filo pastry with spinach. And we're going to go light a fire and have a coffee and hang out with Dido. And in the meantime, I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to jump on and uh, record a little introduction. And uh, yeah, release the next episode. And so this is for everybody who's married, who's in relationships, yeah. who's trying to be in a relationship. Uh, I hope that we give you some really great tips um, just on, yeah, like how to stick it out in a relationship, I guess, how to make things work, yeah. how to repair, yeah. uh, parenting together, yeah. isn't it? What do we say in the house we taught? Teamwork? Like the dream work. That's right. Teamwork makes the dream work. Mama, so, I'll show you this is a one. Okay. Vito wants to show you guys a, a business book I have here. Yeah, yeah it's very, very cool. Um, I'm going to give Vito something little to draw. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. Vito, what do you want to say to everybody around the whole world? Thank you. You want to say thank you for listening? Thank you for listening. Yeah. So <laughs> it's been a lovely weekend. Garmin. We've oh, had God. a really great weekend as a family. We've had beautiful family time. And I have been trying to pin Andrew down for months now to record an episode together. So finally managed to trap him in the car and yeah, record some. Look, this is just personal advice. It's not professional advice. Mommy's talking, can you? Okay. So this is not uh, professional advice. It's just personal advice. We're just drawing on our own experiences that we've had in the last 15 years. By no means are we saying that what we do works or that it works for others, but we just thought since we are in such an era of, um, I guess where those things maybe aren't important anymore, or, you know, we are in the era of dating apps and things like that. I just thought it'd be a really cool episode to do. We have a laugh and, you know, it's just a reflection of us and who we are. And <laughs> um, it's just a little glimpse into our lives. So Vincent. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Like I said, by no means, do, do, you know, take gospel for it. Don't think, oh, this is the way it should be in every single relationship. Uh, we just talk about, you know, what's made us stick and what's made us work in the last 15 years that we've been together. So please share some of your hips, hips, oh my God, tricks, healing and tips. Money can't talk. And um, things that have worked for you. So, you know, uh, we're always open to trying new things and learning new things. So. 
writing on my Instagram and connect with me um, on there. It's just under my personal name and or send, send me an email, send me a message. And yeah, let Hello. me know what other tricks Hello. that you've used. Hello. Like, yes, Hello. we've had. What money's talking? Just give me one minute. Okay. Let me know what has worked for you and what hasn't. And what are some things that, you know, you've learned about yourself um, in being in a long-term relationship, you know? And um, yeah, it's just been such an interesting journey. And now we're parenting together and it's just a whole other dynamic. So I thought it'd be a really fun um, topic to cover. And I haven't done a solo episode in a while. So one is coming to update you guys on everything that's been happening. But I thought it'd be great to get Andrew on there and also to include Vito in this one and make it a little bit of a family affair. I do have some great guests um, family family. behind the scenes in getting to you. And, yeah, I hope, you. and I hope that you've enjoyed the last few episodes that I've brought out. Um, I really try and get a good diversity of guests on. Obviously, it's very hard with different time zones and, you know, people being all in yeah just different locations but so far I'm really happy with um you know all the stories we've managed to talk about on here and all the topics we've managed to cover and if there's anything you want to see more of let me know and um any feedback is always welcome and conversation and yeah thank you for supporting this little podcast and for tuning in and listening and we've had some amazing downloads so there's people in so many different countries listening so I hope that you enjoy this episode. Let me know what you think. It is a bit of a funny one. So please do take it with a grain of salt. It's definitely, it was just us in the car. Mucking around, the audio isn't the best either because we were in the car. So I was just recording on the iPhone. But yeah, it was a fun one. And uh, I've been meaning to get it out all week. So finally, today's the day that I'm going to put it all together and release it um, to you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Vito, say so big kisses and hugs. Oh, oh no. Oh, me just kissing and hugging the microphone. Say, I'm blown to the microphone. Say, blah, blah, blah. kisses. Say, Dobby Jenya. Say, ciao, everybody. Bye. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Say, bye. bye. Bye, everybody. Hello, honey. So. <laughs> bye, everybody. I'm back for another episode of Volcat Sis, and I'm so excited because. I've got my husband here today. I've managed to cut him into sitting in a car with me long enough to record an episode. Usually it just runs away. But he owes it to me because we just had an amazing experience at Cocoon Retreat here at the Gold Coast. So for anybody who is not from here, obviously, I highly recommend that you jump on Instagram or Facebook and you give them a follow. And uh, honestly, just really incredible experience just reconnecting with each other a mom and dad get away so if you follow me on instagram and you have a look on my socials you'll see yeah where we went and what we did but this year has been awesome um and challenging and everything all rolled up in one as you've seen from previous episodes but i wanted to get andrew on because it's our it was our 15 year anniversary in march since we started dating and it's been, the event was our like the anniversary June. 14th of June. So 14th of June was our wedding anniversary, which Andrew now said of the count the other one. And, uh, and I just thought, wouldn't it be cool to do, there's so much crap relationship advice out there. And the relationship advice is coming from people who aren't even in relationships or not with successful relationships anyway. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to get my husband on and we're going to give you 15 tips. In 15 years not being together so for every year we're going to give you a tip so we're just going to take turns babe just do like one by one okay so because okay, if i keep on talking i've got to lose I've my got health, one so. tip, don't get in a relationship you're in a lead <laughs> okay i'm gonna have to delete this bit because that was really rude but anyway okay we have a really cheeky sense of humor as you can tell so Please don't take anything personal. And this is just our lived experience. It's not, you know, how everybody should live their life. But hopefully it will help someone out there who's trying to get into a relationship or who's already married, and, you know, whatever. Trying to reunite the spark again. So thoughts number one on the list for you, mate. Number one. Mm. And for being in a long-term relationship. Loyalty. 
Okay, so what does that mean? They've got to be loyal to their partner. Yes. Or uh, kind of frivolous. Yes. Yes, because we see a lot of cheating and things like that in relationships. Of course, it's worth it. You know, if you're a cheater, you should be in a relationship. Start with everyone. Okay, so let's say Adrian's number one tip, okay? Because when we got together, we sent to each other that was never not negotiable. So that's why it was important to us. So, well, whatever floats your boat, if that's something that both people can say to you, want to do this. Well, if you have a relationship, go for it. Yeah, but if you don't, uh, no go. What is number two? For me, no, actually, should we just do double one <laughs> would be each more. Okay, well, number two for me would be freedom to be who you are. So just freedom and acceptance because that's been the number one thing. Like you supporting me, but why am it be supporting you from who you are? No. That's really, really good. Because I think the most thing people want to do is change each other. You have to change for someone else to rip the book first. Correct. Okay, I agree with that. Number three, mate. Respect. You need respect. respect each other. That's another Well, there's been lots of times you need respect for each other. Yeah. yeah. Res- we respect each other. Yeah. Respect the chop boundaries. Respect the chubbies. Hard to read, like, logs, but... Yeah. Hobbies. Yeah. Okay, so from respect, I would give it to being number four and need to be independence. Yeah. Because... Even though you're still two people in one household under one roof, you still have to have some form of independence to be in real body. Yep. Yeah. But that's hard when you get a kid because... They're the parent together, obviously. Yeah. That's tricky. That becomes tricky because everything just becomes... Yeah, but then you got, I got my parenting views and you got your parenting views. Yeah. And, and you try to... It gets very tricky a lot. Oh. Yeah. And Unless you try to find mutual ground. Yeah. You focus on that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that would be... Well, that real this water and plop it. No, no, you're supposed to drop them down on my phone. Yeah, you're supposed to keep your chuck on this. Finally, Matt's was a strong suit. I need to go. Well, I'd say, okay, number five and number six, whichever one we're on. Uh, it would be just always trying hard. Like, um, what would you put that on, though? It's not really a word for it. But, like, don't be a quitter. Yeah, They're like written. You know, like, I think there's times that we want to quit. And look, we're not condoning, like, if you're in a bad relationship with somebody, we're not saying don't leave. Obviously, there's really serious things happening. Of course, you should leave. You should leave at any time that you want to leave, even if you're just going to feel happy. But I think the successful ingredient is just the yeah, not quitting and sticking it out when you actually just want to wipe from everything and just load everything up. There's so, plenty of time they wanted to quit, but I stuck in there. Yeah, same. What about the stupid, stupid idea of white part if I quit a long time ago? Yeah, I think so too. Because I think you just have to take everything with a grain of salt and the good comes with the bad. Yeah, right? Sometimes you think, ah, oh, too hard basket, I'll just get out of this relationship. Yeah. Well, stick it in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's all worth it at the end. I think. And then what we're still figuring that out. Yeah, we are. We're figuring it out every day. Every day is a different day. Well, it's not like anything's guaranteed. Just as you've been with someone in 10, 10 years or 15 years, that doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean anything. It just, if anything, it just, it's more like inclination to keep with Bobby, yeah. to keep with adding. It, it's not the length of time, but it's what you've done at that time that matters. So. What's the other seven for you, Nick? Right. What have you learned in 15 years of being with the same person? Oh. <laughs> Wife's always right. <laughs> so I've done that. I should have been number one. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I taught you a few things. Okay, so number seven should be the wife's always right. Wife's not the way to If she wants something, just give it to her. And if she's hungry, just feed her. Yeah, that was literally 20 minutes ago. So I was really just hangry this morning, and all I wanted to do was just eat food and have a coffee, and I was really just starting to dry up. But at the minute we got food, I was really happy. So I like split personality. I don't know why they say, he, like, well, um, uh, what is it? To get to a bed's heart is to go through a stomach or something like that. What's the say? I don't know, but I think that's like that for women. I think if you cook for your woman, it, love on her and you look after her 
I treat her like a goddess. Well, just feed her. She'll be happy. Like, what woman out there doesn't like being tall? Come on. But... I'd rather cook my meals, to be honest. But I would say... Just TLC. Take the love of care. <laughs> and wife's always really... No. <laughs> no, I've proven you wrong. Okay, number eight, honey. If, I... What's number eight for you that you've learned in 15 years? Not in a degree, I guess. We just have to not agree. Well, that's what I just said. That yeah, no, no, no. It's never all eat together. No, it's not. No? Sometimes when you, you know you're right, but you just have to keep peace, you're not in a degree. Yeah. Well, what you're trying to say is, would you rather be right or would you rather be married? <laughs> no. No, that's not for both of us. Like, what's more important to you? Being with that person? Yeah. <laughs> Or be right. Because she can be always right, but it means you'll be sick. I'd rather not have an argument than have an argument. That's for sure. But arguing is healthy, but that's another thing. Okay, so number eight. Is that number eight? We don't argue with big home. Look, I think it's important. Like, when people say to them... each other. That's great. I love them. We love But when people say, okay, number eight, you know, when people say, oh, I've never had an argument with my partner. Like, oh, that, that really worries me. Uh, because... It's not about how you are, who you are, but shit is great and always working it out. It's about who you are with Nick's art great. Yeah. That's that's the stuff that makes you break shit. It's not all, it's just about not having options or having an art chips. But that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. I argue, argue it can be healthy, obviously, as long as it's not toxic. It can be a watch of an argument of this. Well, as long as you're not hurting each other physically and everything, obviously, verbally and mentally is another thing, but. We're talking about just like a, we're just talking about a healthy marriage, but I do can't be healthy because I think as long as you're talking, that's better than not talking. It also keeps you on your toes. It keeps you kind of in check with yourself when you argue because sometimes, but you you are wrong with something. You realise that you're wrong. Yeah, but you can know how to fix it. Yeah. So and number nine would be yes, banter. Banter, hundred percent banter. So banter means for anyone who's listening outside Australia, learn how to be funny. Find the funny, isn't it? Like yeah. find the funny. Like when we watched a comedy show, it was Mary Worcester. She did a stand-up comedy. She's a comedian here in Australia, Greek comedian, and you know she talks about that a lot. It's like find the funny in every in every hard situation. You've yeah. got to find the funny because you're either going to laugh or you're going to cry. And crying selfie too. And, for your, hus- for your husband to cry or for a man to cry, it's so healthy. And that's something that we really encourage. Or with me too as well is that it's okay to it's cry. Like cry. It's okay to cry. And I, well, my favorite thing about Andrew is that he's not afraid to shed it to you and show, show his feelings and show none of Yeah, I love that. I think we're all men cry this so. Well, I think so. I think so. Well, there's no such. What, you know, when people say real men, real men, what is a real man anyway? It's just being a good person, isn't it? You know? I think there's just down to the oh, real orbit or a real love. Like, what is a real love and a real... It's just be a good fucking person. Yep. Treat others how you want to but be. Yes, treated. 100% banter. You need banter you need, in your eyes. You need your funniness. I the funny. I had someone actually comment on the banter with the banner of myself. And he was in a relationship. And he tried this banter after two years of relationship. So I said, I said to him, you can't just go in there and just... Start slow words, whatever, like Ivana and I do, because we've been here like 15 years. He tried it and he got demolished. Like, no. Oh, it's got to be context. Like, it's got to be context. He tried it slowly and she literally looked at him and then that you'd ever speak and be like, I got to get it. Yeah. It was just like, no, hard left on that joke. If Ben does with me, you can say bad shit. No, it's it's bad said. stuff. Well, yes, yeah, like, I just say, you can't say to someone, something dumb that hurts their feelings and they go, ha oh, ha, it's funny, you know, but we're, we're just trying to say it like he thinks he could take. No, yeah, 100%. But we're talking about banter. It doesn't mean they just laugh everything off and pretend like nothing's wrong. No, it just means that sometimes when you're in a really tough situation, someone will say something funny like your child or something, you know, you have a laugh. Yeah. That's that's what we mean by that. So people in Europe are listening to this as well. So go just use this Aussie slang. Okay. So there's women all over the world who are listening. It's got like people in Egypt all this thing and stuff in Italy and Croatia and Germany. So keep it keep it general, okay? 
So that's definitely a big, like you fix light and funny and yes, and also it's important to argue. It's all of, it's all of it. There's no one size fits all. It's just everything. All right. What's number, what are we up to number 10 now? Seven. No, what's 10, what's number 10? What's not in the panic? Right, right, right. Yeah. Experiment, I guess. Like, not like, sorry, everything like Obama's never camped before. This whole camp thing that we just did before was actually, I felt like I was a kid again because I used to camp a lot well for children. Then it was, uh, it was quite funny to see a man sleeping. In a tent, it's not, it wasn't really. A tent. It was a dome tent thing. We were glamping, so it was, glamping is there. We were in a tent, but it was all nice. It wasn't secure and nice, and there was an outdoor kitchen. They could it all give you. Give me a swag of a campfire. I've not done. Mate, that. people don't know what a swag. A swag. It's like a little tent that you sleep in. That's an Australia. Oh, how would you explain it? It's like a big sleeping bag. Yeah, man. Uh, That's my bulk count sisters that are listening to me. Okay, okay. No. Uh, Aussie audience, so first swag. It's like a sleeping bag for camp people. So I always uh, told about it. She didn't want to care because she'll be be afraid that she'd like it. Well, I just didn't want to get eaten by steak. But anyway, what are you trying to say? Try stuff out of your, out of your comfort zone that your partner likes. Yeah, because if your partner likes, say like me, I like fishing. I know about it. I really like fishing, but she'll go and sit next to me for an hour or two while I fish. That I like, like, I don't like. What she do that you, that I? You don't even come shot me. I'm just. I was about to say this podcast. I've been stuck in a wave of this podcast. Yes, but but I'm going to pile the coffee and begin. Oh, it's been trying to hold it. I'm not to ring my. What's the thing? I'm getting me the car. I'm like, can't I just start wearing? But I think it's about give and take. What is? Yeah, number eleven would be. So segue from that. So ten would be like. Making your inner child happy. No. So whatever that inner child is. My Andrew, it's camp, big fishing, boating. He grew up here on the Gold Coast in Australia. So very outdoorsy. And, like, and I grew up outdoors as well, just in a different capacity. Obviously in a different place, at a different time. But to segue away from that, in doing things that each person likes is, yeah, just obviously keeping things light and funny and... You know, I think you should have tried something new and experiment and explore more and just see what works. It's like if you had a cockpit and you're a pilot and you've got all these different butts and they do all different things. And I think that's the same way as your relationship. It's just that fine tuning. And sometimes you'll get that sweet spot and sometimes you'll you push every butt. And and sometimes you push buttons. the wrong fucking butt and your wife is going to go along. I said to push that button with you a lot. But look, the thing is, it's just about knowing each other's like limits. Yes. And boundaries and how far, like a rubber band, just how far you can stretch the relationship with how far you can push things and not in a negative way, but in a positive way. So what was I saying? Saying way from that when you're in a child, what was that? Like trying new things and yeah, keeping a fresh perspective, a fresh perspective. Like it's like approaching the relationship as if you just started dating. No. You can't just get complacent. I think you can't get, okay, number 12, he's going to do that. You can't be comfortable. No. You, you can't, you, you've got to be safe and comfortable. Yes. Like this is my person. This is my human, but you can't be comfortable in a sense where you think, oh, I've been with someone for 15 years. Oh, so I don't have to try it out. Yeah. I don't have to. Well, I told the writer when we first got together, well, you need to kick me up the ass every couple of months to get me back in check. Not fault. Just because I don't get, I get comfortable. What? You get to place it. I get I, I, I think men get to place it more in general than women. Like, I'd get into, like, a real comfy spot where... I'd... And then there'd be, like, no cards, no romance, no luck, no, like, do, like, would try. And then it comes across, like, that you didn't care, but you yeah, did. I did. Just felt very comfortable. Just feel comfortable. So that's the thing. I think if you just... Obviously, now we have a child, so it's like you can't get comfortable because your kid's always keeping you on your toes. But I think just, like, yeah, getting comfortable in that comfortable because... Even when things, those conversations you don't want to have, let on a cool quarter, it's comfortable, it's hard, like you've just got to have, yeah, you've got to have that mutual. I have the legs on my head, no, I'll just forgot. What was number 13? 
Oh, I'd say finances are a big one because I feel like there's so many people I know that have married and that don't share finances. Um, like, I don't know. It's like, and I feel like it's just do whatever works, but I feel like the finances reflect the relationship. So if everything is separate financially. I've found that don't be like my money is my money. Yeah, like mine this, my that, mine. Nothing is certain as in a relationship I've learned. Hours. Yeah. Yeah. We both work. No, what's twice? What's yours is fine. What's mine is what? <laughs> no, but yeah, like a mutual vision. A mutual yeah, vision. Like we've had a joint bank account for 12 minutes. Yeah. Like, we started saving the minute we got together. We had a joint bank account before we were married. Like, yeah. So I'm yeah. very used to having a joint bank account. Very used to. And that just goes back to trust. Yeah. I'm very used to thinking about my bank account. Where's my money gone? Then you're like, oh, I've moved it to this account for this, this, and that, and that. Yeah. So it's it's great. Like, but I, yeah, well, I don't have to worry about our finances because yeah. the Vada is all over and I love, love the thing. But also, like, when he goes, was that number 30? Yes, number 30. Okay, so number 40 would be not having, some people would say having an assigned role, but I would say being able to switch roles. Like, yeah. that's really important. You can't just say, oh, sh- you're the good cook or, oh, you're the, I am you're the money. Guy. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> well, you're the money person or you're the admin person. You're like, yes, yeah, but... everyone has a role, but it's very important that you're both able to cut across each other's lanes if you need to, because God forbid my person gets sick or something happens or in the case of when I've had needs off and I was pregnant and then I've had, like, you need to be able to both do the same jobs. Yeah. Because the amount of times I see a guy who's too precious to cook, too precious to take the rubbish out, doesn't cut the grass, doesn't do any fucking life chores, it's like, why are you in a relationship? You know? So you've got to be able to, like, Andrew does all the cooking now, or majority of the cooking. So that's what's important. Like, no one gets away with anything. Everybody has a duty and everybody has a job. And it's what we say in the house, honey. What do we say? Being a team. Teamwork makes the dream work. So you've looked in for a minute, but embarrass me. <laughs> but, but, no, but we say, but it just says teamwork makes the dream work. That's right. That's, that's really key, I think, because. They're watching our sub practice what we actually do. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah, like what, like he sees that it's normal that dad does the dishes and he sees it's normal yeah. that dad cooks and then he chops up stuff with dad and like. And he was cleaning the sink and he's like, he, Andrew makes cakes with him and they bake together. And I think it's really important because I think so many people talk about this whole like masculine feminine thing. I don't really actually find it, think that anybody even knows what masculine feminine is anymore. I, I don't think like my parents' roles were really clear when they were dating. It was like, you're going to have the kids to stay home and I'm going to be working, you know, bring home the money. And that was it. But. Since they've gotten older, more, I'm stuck in that for once. Yeah, yeah, but in a new day, in a mutual, yeah. which doesn't work. Right. That's why there's so many separations and so much abuse and everything because people are still stuck in that mindset, but it's 2023. Yeah. But if it works for somebody, then that's great. If it works for them, it's. So y'all can be a dad, mum, and you can be a mum, dad. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's like I'm happy to be like wrestling with Bido and like be active with him or kick a ball but then so does Andrew or like I'll go to the kitchen I'll he goes to the kitchen he cooks so I think just like about talk about sensitive subjects we think sometimes you know it's yeah the role yeah. is reverse yeah 400 times a day yeah that's right but I think just be ready to like to pivot and to change you got to be open yeah. you have to be open-minded because if you're not open-minded then I don't think your relationship is going to go anywhere if, if you have a clear, if you're not, you want one person to change, but you're not willing to make any change, that's, that's really crap. Anyway, what would your number 15 be? I try to think, I thought of what just before, but then we start talking about the same team. Totally forgot. Okay, I'll do my thing to think about what you want to say. Number 15 for me would be, and yeah, this is what I've come to learn since we've had a child, is work less on your relationship and work with yourselves. So for me, it's like whenever I start to get angry or cranky and the whole world's against me and everything's Andrew's fault, like I just try to think, okay, what am I, 
what have I unmet needs? What haven't I communicated? Well, like, I just go back to myself and I just say, like, what is it? Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? You should know. Most of the time, you're hungry. Yeah, most of the time, it's because I need, a, <laughs> I need a fucking shower and I just need a glass of water and I need a hot coffee. That's all it is. Most of the time, I just need like a 10 minute lay down. And, that, and after that, I'm fine. So I think identify your needs and then go be happy in the relationship. But if you are in a relationship wanting that other person to fill all your needs, you want that person to be your mom, your dad, your best friend, you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your lover, like you, your parent, like that person can't fulfill all those roles. That's a really a tough expectation, I reckon. Yeah. Like, you, you know, yeah, I just feel like that's where it gets tricky because sometimes people want that person to be everything like a shrine for them and you just can't like you have to still have your needs and you still have to have like your friendships and girlfriends and things that you enjoy doing for yourself so that you can go be a happier person in your relationship and in your marriage and with your family what do you think honey about that well just what do you think in general yeah about that and you're number 15 yeah i'm still trying to think number 15 well what do you think of what i just said i, I totally agree and don't be scared for help, like to ask the other person for help. Like you've got something going on, like if you're anxious or whatever. Yeah. Ask for help. It's not. Yeah. It's them. Well, so we try to say that person can't read your mind. You have to tell them. That's that's right. Like he thought I was a mind reader at the start of my relationship. Yeah. I guess. Fifteen years ago, and not like, get the shits really, and I didn't even know what I did. Yeah. So. We've come such a long way in 15 years in some yep. way. But it took, you know, it's, it's still taking every day to learn about each other. Yeah. Like, and also don't moments. wait, but don't wait for the right moment. The right moment will let come. Oh. Like that's another thing. So, oh, you're pissed off about something in that moment. You go, oh, I just leave it. And that that's easy to do when you have kids because you go, I don't want to do it in front of the children or yep. in front of each other. The thing is you have to say it because if you don't say it, and it might be really shit at the moment, but... You need, you need to make time for each other to talk about problems. Yeah. Yeah, but also, like, talk about the problem when it's there. Yep. It's not three weeks later. Oh, yeah. Or when you did this three weeks ago, I was fucking pissed off about that. Like, yeah. actually talk about it in the moment and make time for each other because that's something that we're trying to do now. And... I know for people who have smaller kids than us, my kids than us, that would be really difficult to do. But I think just like... You need to make time for each other and you also need to make time for yourself. Yeah. Time apart. Yeah. Uh, like this weekend was amazing. Spending three days just with the barter, no veto, no house, no business, no uh, pets, no nothing. We're just father and I on a mountain overlooking the ocean, fresh air and out of Morton's nature. It's just, it was like a reset. Like we, we're closer. We're closer. And uh, I love that. And if Ivana said that she wanted to go for a three-day retreat by herself, let's 100% go for it. Great, I'll go next weekend. Yeah, I'm a three hour troop myself. Yeah, like you gotta have you gotta have things away from your like that your interests and your hobbies that you have for yourself. And then you have stuff like we just sit as a couple and now I think it's just like nice food and we like laughing. So we like to go to like just call like a comedy festival or something like that or and so you just got to, like, find your thing, I guess. Like, you know, yeah. like some people are acting. Well, no, I don't you know. expect Nevada to go to a fishing trip with me. <laughs> don't expect it at all. Oh, I wouldn't mind. But, yeah, like that. But that's the thing, not having that expectation that this person has to fulfill all my needs. No. Like, this person's my buddy. You know, I like, as much as I love fishing, if Nevada loved fishing too, I think it wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to have the different. You need to have yeah. different interests. Yeah. Like... Yeah, so would that be your number 15? What's that? Like being accepting your differences. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love my fishing. I like, you know, camping, raw outdoorsy type. Stuff I used to do with the kids. So I don't expect a mother to be like, if I say I want to go on a camping trip for a week, <laughs> I don't expect 
her to come with me straight away. We wean it, wean, wean Nevada into the camping lot, which we're this week then. Yeah, but it's also just accepting each other's differences and being honest. Because I told you yeah. once, beginning, uh, this is not, I'm not that no, person. I remember when we first started dating, you came fishing with me once and you cracked the shits. Yeah, I mean, because I didn't teach you how to fish. I just assumed you knew. Yeah, but that's the assuming, it's just you, like, mind reader. Like, yes. you're assuming that that person knows, but the, but they don't. It's you for them. Like, treat every day just as a new day and start off fresh. And that's the thing, and accept each other's differences because you are not, if you're wanting to date yourself, then, then you're never going to, no. you're never going to find anyone. No one ever is going to be up. It's like you need the yin and the yak. You need the yin and the yak. You need the magnet. You need the friction. Yeah. Reverse polarity. That's the thing. That's, I think what most people, like what I see out there is people say, oh, there's no nice girls out there anymore. Oh, there's no good guys out there anymore. And it's like. They're looking for themselves. I'm like, what, did they just run out? Yeah. Like, did humans just run out? I don't get it. I'm like, Andrew's a human. I'm a human. How can we make it at work? And somebody else can't, right? We're from the old school era. No, well, we got old school and new school. You know, we got a bit of that, like, old school, like, you know. When you make a promise, you make a promise, you say about we took those vows seriously. But also we were together for ten years before we had Beetle. Like before right. we had a baby. So but everybody's relationship is gonna look different. By no means are we saying this is a recipe, this is what you like. These are the rules you have to live by. It's not that. It's not like the Ten Commandments. You're human, you make mistakes, you fuck up. But at the end of the day, you just you grow together. You learn together. You'll learn as you go. There's just, I think as long as you're on the same path and you share a similar vision, it doesn't matter how you get there. That's, that's what I reckon. What about you, babe? I totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. So we're probably in agreement now because we have the last three days together. No, we always end up agreeing on something. We do. We do. This is the thing. We end up maybe fighting about something. No, like you... compromise. Oh, yeah. Compromise. God. Compromise. That's not a sexy word, but it's true. It's like my like, old saying. Remember when I used to come there with a new boat or something? Oh, no, no. No, don't say that. That's fuck, fuck no. No. But Andrew, <laughs> Andrew once went out and just bought a boat. Never told me about it. Just brought it home. You know? And he just thought. He, cause he, he knew I'd say no, of course. Of course I'd say no. It's a boat. We don't need another thing. And it's like, we're, we're saving money to go to Europe. We're saving money to do something, you know. So I was really unhappy about that. So we've come a long way from those days, but this is what I mean. It's about just showing your flaws and being open because so many people out. That's another thing. Don't compare your relationship to others. Like that would be a bloody number 16. So we could go to number 20, but we haven't been 20 years yet. So, but a lot of people just think, oh, look at their relationship or, you know, oh, look yeah. how perfect they have it or this or that. But the thing is, you don't know what's happening behind the curtain. That's right. So don't compare your relationship to anybody else's. Just make your relationship the best that it can be rather than looking at somebody at looking less than tick right going, oh, they seem to have everything. Lucky them, you know. So, but you don't know. Yeah, you, luck. It's just a matter of preparation meets the right moment. So... Where we men turned up together, probably. You know, we dated when we were teenagers. So I used to ride down even though I was not so on the boat when I was in high school. And now we're married. So talk about manifesting. And if you would know what manifestation was all those, what, 20 years ago. We were just speaking about this. We were just talking about that before, you know, like. Did the old catch and release. So they caught me in the neck <laughs> eight years later. That's right. I let him have a bit of freedom. And I thought, okay, I'll let you go out there and you're heartbroken. Then I'll cut, you know, you learn all the lessons and then you come back. And that's the thing. I feel like, you know, if two people let each other go and come back to each other, I guess you're always meant to be in some sort of quality way. Well, I knew it was meant to be once we started speaking. I believe what was a wise place back then. But you do, you do have a feeling, right? Yeah. You've got a feeling. That that's what I said. Yeah. This is not a coincidence. So how do you do, how do you differentiate the feeling? How would you describe it? It's just a gut it's thing. It's a gut yeah. instinct. Yeah. I was like, I fell in love with you in a day. Yeah. That's what it felt like. <laughs> you know, gotta have the corny, the corny jokes and the, you, and the love, the corny love jokes. You gotta keep the romance. The romance is another one. Yeah. You need to keep the romance alive. Yeah. It could be stagnant for three months. Yeah. 
But I think don't beat yourself up. Like if your partner's not here at you, or if you're going through a rough time or you've just had a baby and he's not talking to you or you're not talking to him or all like this, you go through times where you're going through like a really bad problem or like a really, I don't know. I think you just got to keep, keep the hope, like keep the hope, keep the faith alive. You just always keep the door open to work stuff out. Like you have to keep your heart open, even if, even if it means you can get hurt, you know? Oh, it means for us in terms of relationship, oh, it's obviously love. It has to be love there. Respect has to be there. Yeah. Commitment. Yeah. There. We said loyalty. We said well, independence. We said lots well, of love. But the key ones. Yeah. The most important thing is that you respect each other, you love each other, and you just, you just connect. You know, I've been, I've been, you'd have a laugh and not take this all so serious. But, it, it, but there's a lot of contradictions because, you know, we have a laugh, but we don't take that so serious. But then we can have really, really hard conversations. Yep. So I don't, it's like, I don't think there's just a one way solution. No, I think you're just going to work out makes, every. Like yeah. us work. Yeah. But every day you've got to just find your way, right? Yeah, we're all pretty, pretty sure some people will look at us and go, what is up with their relationship? They're yeah. always. They're, they're bickering, they, they, they rib on each other in a time. But you know what? That's, that's us. Yeah. But just find what works for you and do it. And then just do it day in, day out. And that's that's the success. So then you just keep adding. You keep, It's like a bucket. You just keep adding the drips in there. You keep adding water in there. You know, it's just one day after another, one day after another. And it amounts 15 years, 20 years. Well, you know, then you don't just throw it all out. So I think it's just like. I've been too deep to throw it out there. Yeah. Well, having, no, it's like having a nest. Do you know when a bird is building a nest? It's just like, you're sort of adding to it, adding to it, adding to it. You know, and it just builds that nest, builds that home, builds that foundation. So build the foundation. And, 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 you know, I think the last thing to add to add to that, because we're almost uh, ready to pick up our little one, who's been at my sister's house. But the last thing I would add to that is cho- cho- like choice. Yeah. Right. So every day you just got two choices, you know, so, and then it doesn't matter how much you love each other, how much respect there is, people still break up. And look, look, like, even, even though they love each other, they respect each other, maybe just something so the way one person's living their life is not, I don't know, in alignment with the other. But every day it's still a choice to wake up and to be with each other. And it's just like anything, it's just a choice, right? So us is just making that conscious choice every single day. We just choose each other over and over and over and over again. Even when shit gets hard, tough. It's like going to the gym, I guess. When I go to the gym, I've done it when it's short. It's like going to the gym. You know it's going to be painful. You know it's going to hurt. But all you know is you have to show up, right? And then you do the work. But if you don't go to the gym, you'll never have... Or like if you don't exercise, whatever, you're not going to have this hot body that you want. Not that we are uh, hot bodies, but... It's no, just, just, just an analogy, you know? It's like if you want that relationship, you'd have to be willing to put in the work. Yeah. Uh, because nothing comes overnight. Like, so... Like a garden, you know, water it, you won't know, flower. And also, like, people say, oh, you're so lucky in your books and you're so lucky this, that. But I don't think it's luck. Like, I made it like that. I pushed it to be that way. There was a lot of disagreements and fights along the way to get it to that. It's not like I just got this but like perfect person from day one. That's the thing. I think everybody just wants this perfect She person. molded me out of play. I literally molded this guy. Like, I don't know. Is it recording still? Hang on. Oh, I thought I lost it. All that 36 minutes. But uh, that's the thing. I think people just think, oh, when I find my Mr. Right or when I find my Miss Perfect or whatever. It's like, it's not going to happen. There is no perfect cook for you. So you just have to have an imperfect person. Who knows they're imperfect and who are willing to work stuff out? Like, I enjoy cooking. I enjoy lots yeah, of things. Yeah, but cooking is just a life scam. I'm just saying. I should know how to But a lot yeah. of my male friends raise an eyebrow when I say that I cook. They that I cook all the time. My father cooks too. But I, I, like, I like, like to cook. So, and a lot of them, they, they raise their eyebrows. Like, That's your wife cooking. So, you're not, like, we're not, we're not, men, you know, like, yeah. like 
when they from the 1900s, like early 1900s or 1700s, whatever, that the woman cooked, cleaned, and burnt children. What was the her own what job? Anything else? You know, like it's a combined effort. Yeah. Joint household. If you want something, if you want something from your partner, what are you giving them in return? That's the whole thing. It's not just about, oh, I get to just sit pretty and I get to do nothing and my partner does everything. Yeah, I get to just do nothing because I don't know, I'm a man, you know? That's not how we I always, I always respect sit around, respect. play video games, like expect everything to be done, you know, washing, cooking, cleaning. But that's because of what you got more like that, I, or because of how you I parents. grew up the way I am. But because you about it, yes, yes, of course. I came from yeah. uh, well, Italian family, so of course, my, my dad loves cooking too. So my dad just to cook. My yeah, so it was normal to see your dad do dishes. And my grandfather was yeah. majority of the, the chef in the house. Yeah. Uh, no, so yeah. I so saw it. Yeah, you saw it. Myself. That's right. And it's not like a bunch of molded beds. Yeah. She molded some certain things. I just, I sharpened it up. I just like made it better. Well, I should sharpen it up. I sharpened it up a bit. But <laughs> so I already had the bare essentials there. Yeah. For a perfect yeah. husband. Oh my God. He just needed the perfect <laughs> wife to come and bring it all together. <laughs> but this is what I mean. It's like you just get somebody who's 40% ready. Forty percent. You just get someone who's who's right. I reckon it's worse than Oh my God! No way! No way! Not seventy-five. Man. You're living. You still get seventy-five now. Oh come on. Um, uh, but you just it is about not going out and finding a blue chick for this person. It's not like I went now and like I'm gonna catch the biggest fish that I can from the ocean. It was just like okay, whatever. Like I don't want to. I want to be single you know, for I'll, a while. Look for that for that one place and you'll never find it. That's right. So I think just be the best version of yourself and look after yourself and the right person will come into your life. Yeah. And it's all it always happens when you're not looking for it. It always happens you yeah, know, when you're, you're not searching for it, when you know, out there saying, and also just be accepting of yourself and your flaws and your shortcomings and know about them so that you're willing to put your shit on the table. They're willing to put their shit on the table. And then you're willing to just work it out together and build a solid foundation, you know, and it's just a nice life, you know, and build a family and whatever else. So there's so much more, there's so much more that we could talk about, but that was our 15th thing. It was like, I think I was 15 or 16. And we don't want to bore you because it's already been 40 minutes. So that's almost like just under an hour. But we just wanted to say thank you for joining Eve. Thanks for listening. And this is the last time you'll ever hear from me. So Andrew will be back. He'll be back. <laughs> and I hope that some of it helps and that maybe some of it resonated if you're in a relationship or if you're looking to, if you want to be in a relationship. Uh, well, maybe your relationship's on the break course collapsing or what, wherever you are at in the moment, I hope that maybe one or two things resonated. If they did, let us know about it and uh, give us some feedback. And if you guys want Andrew back on it, get no sub wisdom. Um, I'm happy to bring him back. I'll trap him next time in the car again. <laughs> no, I'm doing in the car at mobile office, but we're about to pick up our little one now and our little beans off. We haven't seen him in two days and we're so, so excited. So I'll share a lot more of my stories and I hope that you guys like this episode. You'll say bye, babe. See you later. Love that. It was a pleasure being on your podcast, babe. All my Balkan sisters, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Plot. Ciao. So that was the episode. I hope that you really enjoyed it. And as ever, if you did, please consider sharing it with your loved ones and leaving me a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. It really does make a difference to the number of Balkan sisters that we can reach with the brilliant wisdom that my guests and I share. Thanks for being here. Idovijenia.